So first, just a quick background review on uh, crude oil. So uh, these are fossil fuels. So fossils um, are typically millions of dead things buried in rock layers laid down by water all over the earth. Uh, and so if there's uh, an impermeable layer uh, below, below and beneath, uh, sorry, beneath and above, uh, then the oil and gas gets trapped. And uh, typically there's some water there as well and it's floating on top of the water. Uh, and so that can then get extracted. So what you see uh, with crude oil is a mixture of carbon chains. And these are all the lists um, of when it's boiled off. Um, so if it takes uh, a high temperature to boil off, it's um, a larger chain and that will then be of different use. And so the gas has come off the easiest uh, and then you've got a whole heap of products that we get from crude oil. And so when you look at crude oil, you'll see that it's not just uh, hydrocarbons. There are other products in there, notably uh, metals, sulfur and nitrogen. Uh, and these can produce uh, sulfur uh, and nitrogen. They produce oxides, which can produce acid rain uh, and other um, metals, which are the form other sorts of pollution. Uh, basically, you're going to need the formula for combustion. So combustion of a hydrocarbon, it's going to have to be balanced. This one's just a generic one, but combined with oxygen and release carbon dioxide and water. OK, so just a quick overview of fuels in general as well. So we're going to be looking at uh, just petrol and diesel. So diesel are larger chains. Uh, so it is cheaper, but doesn't burn as cleanly. Uh, and petrol and gasoline are smaller chains, 4 to 12, uh, more expensive. Uh, but they burn cleaner. It's a mixture of alkanes, alkenes, and silo, uh, cycloalkanes. Uh, and so I've just an interesting note, uh, the super high performance will just be a pure octane. Uh, and so that's expensive just to purify that. Uh, and also these smaller chains, such as um, smaller molecules, such as ethanol and hydrogen, burn much cleaner because uh, they can mix with oxygen much better. Uh, and so you don't get soot or carbon monoxide or incomplete burning. OK, so smaller chains um, um, and more pure fuels decrease pollution, increase efficiency, but also increase costs. So now I'm just going to go over um, how we make some of those. So the first one is fermentation and fermentation is by taking organic products uh, and basically the uh, enzymes in the yeast. Uh, so that's the yeast there, it's the enzyme. They turn those products into ethanol. So typically uh, we use glucose sugar. Uh, but you can use any sorts of uh, products uh, and the enzymes or other bacteria will break it down uh, and the yeast typically convert that down, convert that to an ethanol. So you'll need to memorize uh, certainly ethanol and carbon dioxide that comes off uh, and I would also learn the formula for glucose as well uh, and make sure you know how to balance reactions because you may be given something else that's not glucose. So just a quick review on what the enzymes are. So they're biological catalysts, increased radioactive not being used by the reaction. They have an enzyme substrate complex that lowers the activation energy, providing a easier uh, alternate pathway. OK, uh, just out of interest too, um, that yeast produce ethanol, but then they kill themselves uh, once it gets to about 13 percent. Um, so they don't know to stop. They just keep on producing. Uh, and so in order to get your uh, drinks that are above 13 uh, percent, your spirits and so forth, we use distillation. OK, so uh, the first fuel is ethanol, and this is the second way to produce um, ethanol. We basically grab the ethene. Uh, so this is just an addition reaction. The ethene from the crude oil, we separate that out and we basically add water. And so the water uh, breaks up into the H and OH, basically. Uh, and so these bonds break here. And so you get uh, this product here, uh, which is ethanol. So you need to know that reaction there. Um, notably, uh, sometimes the syllabus is not clear about when you need to know a catalyst or not. I would still know, uh, learn that it's concentrated sulfuric acid. If you're ever in trouble and you don't know what the catalyst is, um, sulfuric acid is sort of the king of chemicals and is used as a catalyst for many reactions. Uh, so that's your go-to if you've forgotten. This here is also a uh, mechanism that may help you uh, know how it works. And so this is the proposed mechanism of how it works. So H plus is very positive and it'll stick uh, to the free electron pairs that are on water. And so we don't actually have place H plus um, floating around in water. It's actually the hydronium ion, the H3O plus. And so we draw these arrows. So it always is from the negative to the positive. Uh, the double arrow means both uh, electron pairs are attracted. Uh, if you just do a single arrow, it's just one. 
Uh, and so when you get this complex joined together, you'll have this carbocation here and just the normal water. The water will then, uh, the negatives will still be attracted to this area here. Uh, and so what you'll have is you'll have this complex here. Uh, and then you'll still have uh, waters hanging around. Uh, and so this uh, will pop off here because you still have uh, plenty of water uh, around the place to interact with it. Uh, and so you end up with this product at the end. So uh, getting off ethanol now into how we make hydrogen. So most of the world's hydrogen is actually produced uh, in a non-organic way. So we grab methane, uh, use heat and a nickel catalyst and react it with water that creates hydrogen gas and carbon monoxide. That carbon monoxide then further reacts with water uh, to produce a little bit more hydrogen and carbon dioxide. So you can see methane into this area here, that pressure and the nickel catalyst in here uh, cause that reaction. So you get the H2 come off and the CO and the CO re-reacts with the extra water to create the CO2. So you get the H2 and the CO2 products off. And the second way to produce hydrogen is electrolysis. Hopefully your teacher has demonstrated this one to you in class because this one's quite an easy one to do. Uh, the good thing is I haven't, uh, there's no thing, nothing to memorize here. I've grabbed this straight from the data booklet. Uh, you can see I've used uh, sulfuric acid as a catalyst here. And so if you write down these equations, um, you can see that the water is on the wrong sides. So it has to be reversed. So it'll be minus 1.23. Um, and so we do H2O becomes oxygen and then um, H2O here, uh, gaining the electrons to be reduced, um, produces the hydrogen here. If we were to add these two together, there's four electrons here. So I need to times this equation by two. Uh, and once you add them up, you'll end up with this equation here. So two waters um, goes to two H2 plus O2. Okay, which is um, just simply the reverse of um, doing it in the opposite direction for the hydrogen fuel cells, which is the next video. And the last one is biodiesel. So we've done um, hydrogen, um, ethanol, and now biodiesel. So there's two ways to produce biodiesel that you need to know. Uh, so base catalyst is the first one. So you put a base in there and you grab the oils. Um, so this is uh, very good because it can use all the waste oil has a high yield uh, and doesn't require high temperature or pressure. So the uh, base here it cleaves off this section over here. Uh, and so the O, the R, O, H's come along here and the R's um, and the R's join up here and the O, H's join over here basically. Uh, and so you get glycerol, so that's propen one, two, three trial. And then you get these uh, fatty acid um, esters. Okay, so there's the ester, ester group. Uh, and so that is biodiesel. And so what you can see here is obviously it's not a very clean uh, system that goes on. It can go the other way. Uh, and obviously there is um, orders of reaction. So they don't cleave off all at the same time. Uh, and so you'll get quite a messy amount of products um, that are produced in this and this will need to be purified. Now, if you go to the second way to produce um, biodiesel, just jump to that. Uh, if you use enzymes, it'll do it much more cleanly. Um, so there's a higher purity and also better for the environment. Um, you haven't yet to use um, another substance, methanol, that's taken from crude oil. Uh, but of course, there's a downside. So it's slower and more expensive and lower yield. So lipase is another way to do it. Now, just uh, back a little step. Now, sometimes you get uh, left field questions such as what do you think would happen if there was too much water? in this uh, equation. So just to show you how messy things are, if you have too much water, uh, then so sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide and heat, this is the same sort of thing. So you should really get biodiesel from this, but if there's water involved, uh, that interacts, interacts with the reaction and you can actually get an ionic salt instead. So instead of getting the, the fatty acid esters, you're going to get a fatty acid salt, which is soap. So you've got the positive here. Uh, the hydrophobic end and the hyd hydrophilic end and the hydrophobic end. Okay, so that is not going to burn very well in your engine.